Now, there's a tie lots of patterns over the years, uh, and uh, one pattern especially in the last few years, uh, the detached bodied hog hoppers has done extremely well. Now, one of the ones it's been doing is a, is a red tag version, and I've ran out, so I'm going to be tying some more. Now, the body is just a black foam body. Now, in this case, this has a kind of oily effect. It's a local foam. It's a two mil thick. Uh, I cut it a length. You're looking around two mil wide, like that. Now, to get the taper, what I like to do, just basically cut the end just slightly underneath so it helps towards the taper but I, I use the, the lighter and melt the end now you've got to be careful when you do this it's just the underside you're doing in this case if it's just all black it doesn't matter what side you just as long as you do it now use the lighter just to lightly heat the end up then moisten your finger and thumb and then press it and that'll give you the taper that you need for the body now the old way of doing it was basically just to put a point in, and it still works. The the other way I'm going to be tying it is just to split it in half, but if you don't want to do this, this is the old way. I'm going to show you how the both bodies. You basically use, a, in this case, a uni thread in black. You put the thread, hold the, the waist end in your fingers, bring it on the top of the needle, and you do two or three turns, bring it underneath foam, two or three turns up, and you keep working your way up, getting the shape in the body, slightly increasing the, the length of the segments, usually about five or so. It's as easy as that, but always tying in the waist end as well as you go up. And then what I do is I just then uh, trim them, both the same length. It's important because you tie these on to hold. This is basically holding the body together. So when you tie these on the hook, you have to tie these in. Now you then slip it off. And that gives you your body, which is simple and ready to go. Now, you can, sometimes you get a weaker cross like stitch, if you want to call it, with the thread as it goes up. You can hide that by simply, like, you see me tapering the, the end. Here we are. So I'm going to cut this maybe around about just over an inch in length. Then, what I do is I use my finger and thumb, in this case, my left hand, and I the straight cut scissors right down the middle. Guiding the tips of the scissors to the about, say, to the first segment length away from that cut. So basically the, the tip here, you like a segment away from that, and then you put the point of the needle into the, the end of the body, like that. And then you just start again, you put the thread on the top, same uni thread, hold the waist end in your fingers, so you get to that first segment, two or three turns, take your thread turns up between the foam and you'd work your way up. And this is what this is doing, is hiding the thread turns within the foam. And you just got to make sure when you bring the foam back down, back in towards the needle, you put it on the sides. And you work your way up and this will give you your taper. Again, five segments. And that's the styles or the bodies that you can make for this fly and then you've got to finish. Again you've got the both ends, you've got the tying end and the waist end together and you slip it off and there we are. And I just roll it thin my fingers and it, it's, it's underneath it's much neater. Uh, that's the only reason or one of the main reasons for doing that or splitting it. And so see when you look at it, I don't think the fish will notice much but uh, I've, there's not a great deal of difference to it, but it's entirely up to you about what you want to use. Now I'm going to be tying the, the red tag. This is the hog hopper version, and uh, hook choice is basically it's up to yourself, but one of my favourite hooks is this one here. This is the full mill. It's a short shank special in black nickel. Now this is a size 12. Now the shank equivalent, like the length of that is equivalent to a size 14. It's a gape, it's equivalent to a size 12. Now, thread I'm going to be using, the uni thread 80 in black. Now, I'm going to put a layer of thread down from the eye to the point of the hook, just to this point here. Then I'm going to tie in, this is some red wool. Now, when you buy your wool, it 
comes usually normally in this case it just came in three strands of remove one now there's two here and what I'm going to do is tie this in just going to line up the ends I'm going to catch this in and tie it down taking the thread up and back down to the point of the hook nice and tight now I'm going to trim this not just slightly just as the bend starts to go round not too I want it, don't want it too long so trim that away and then using my finger here I'm just going to fluff it out then for our body we formed earlier I'm going to tie in that last segment which is there now that's including the th tying threads and the waist ends of the foam and then we come in at the top and then we trim at an angle well basically it's a straight cut in length in lo uh, the length of the shank but it's an angle cut on this so that when you Take your thread down, tapers towards the eye, and there's no step. It's a gradual taper towards the eye, so it's much easier to get things to sit. Now I'm going to put some legs on this. Now, I've pre-knotted pheasant tail legs, in this case in black. I'm only going to put two either side. You could put more on if you want. But so what I do is I bring them 90 degrees from the stem of the feather. The tips naturally line up, tear them off. You want them slightly, obviously, longer than the body. Just use the body to keep them apart. So I've got two either side. And these are on the side. Again, make sure they're nice and tight. And check the length. Now, I'm just going to shorten them just a wee tad too long. If you're not happy with the length, just go back. Hold both ends, bring them in. And then catch them in. You could have them that long if you want, but I just want them slightly shorter. Are you happy with the length? And I am, so let me trim away the waist. Got wax on my thread. Now, you can see how it's sitting. Make sure your thread, or your body, is right up against the tail. So take your thread down to that point to make sure it's tidy there. And now we're going to tie in some deer here. This is some road deer. It's a nice coloured, nice brown part. So usually this runs along the ridge of the back. Now, let me take a length out. I'm going to build this wing up. And you're looking at the tip slightly short of the, the end of the, the body. So hold that within your fingers. I usually trim away the waist. Sit them on the top. Pinch and loop. Nice and tight. Just make sure there's wax on your thread. And then I'm going to use some peacock, you can use glister, or in this case this is diamond bright. Glister's uh, probably the easiest to get here in the UK, so you get the same a kind of black glister would be the peacock version. Or olive, any of them would do, it makes for a nice body. Or just use a black dubbin, it's entirely up to yourself. You put a dubbin on there, just check you're in the area away the excess and then we go back to our road here again repeat what we just did with the wing set it on hold the wing you want just work your way up much the same length as we put on it's just as you go up it'll taper itself again tidy this area up and then put more dubbing in slide it up it's easy stuff to work with, just I'm putting the, the hook in its side so I can see what's happening on the far side here. Too, too much there, I don't want as much as that. It's fine. You drop more deer here. Get my length, it's fine. Turn away the waist. Let me catch this in. Nice and tight. Tidy things up a wee bit here. Back to my dubbing, just a touch. We don't need much. And then we're going to finish off with the road here. This would be like uh, a 
Kadis, if you're doing an Elkir Kadis, this is the type of finish you would get at the head. Just checking here, I've got enough room. First thing you do is make sure there's a bit of wax on your thread. Let me get my length there. This time we don't trim the deer here because we're using this part of the head. We come in with a good three or four turns, keeping hold of the wing. And then as we work towards the eye, we come in with a turn between the cut ends of the deer here, towards the eye, lift the last and the deer hair up. Two or three turns in there. Keeping the thread always tight, don't let it go. We can get straight in and work finish. Turn away your thread. And then bring out the cut ends of the deer here. And then we're going to trim it at an angle. So we're going to come up from underneath. Try and let you see what I'm doing here. And then you can trim. See how it looks. Just going to push it back a wee bit. Now, to we quick look, see how everything's sitting. It looks okay. And what I'm going to do is just a wee touch of varnish into the, in the head here. And then I'm going to get a piece of wire, in this case, just to clean out the eye. You can use your needle. There we are. That's the red tag version of the, the Hawk Hopper. Um, I see there's, there's a few other colours, I mean I've got plenty there. There's, Obviously the main colours are there, tan and so and orange, uh, black or so. But there's plenty of colours you could tie, dark brown. So tie that up to yourself. But that's this one, especially for the wild brownies, uh, done extremely well. It's a simple fly to tie. You see, you could use a needle and just pick out an odd fibre, your dubbing needle. The, there we go. Just there, give it a bit more leggy, like. They left out. But through fishing this this will start to wear a wee bit. But anyway, there we go. And that's your red tag or copper. So I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs>